I'm Fire Inspector Thatcher Plant of the Bedford Fire Department. Using a portable fire extinguisher is not difficult, but please don't wait until there's actually a fire before you try to learn how to use one. There's lots of small print on here and you don't want to be waiting to read this when there's a fire. But using a portable fire extinguisher isn't difficult. You just want to remember, pass. Gonna pull the pin, aim at the base of the fire, squeeze the handle and sweep from side to side until the fire is out. You wanna call 911 even if the fire is fully extinguished because we're gonna need to perform an investigation. This is a residential fire extinguisher. You'll notice it's a little bit smaller than the ones you usually see and there's no hose attached to it, but it works the same way. If you only have one fire extinguisher in your home, you wanna keep it in your kitchen because cooking is the number one cause of residential fires. And every year or so, you wanna take your fire extinguisher and make sure the gauge is in the green where it's full. And then you wanna take the fire extinguisher and invert it a couple of times upside down Give it a couple of taps because there's some dry powder in here that if you leave it for too long, it will become solidified and it won't work properly. Colleen, have you ever used a portable fire extinguisher before? No. All right, are you willing to try? Sure. All right, so we have a portable fire extinguisher. I'm gonna teach you the PASS acronym, which is pull the pin, aim at the base of the fire, not where the flames of the smoke are. You wanna aim at the base of the fire where the chemical reaction is taking place. You're gonna squeeze the handle and sweep from side to side. Okay. All right, go for it. All right, so now that we know how to use a fire extinguisher, we have to purchase one to have ready at our home. So we're right. back, back at our local hardware store in the fire safety section, our smoke alarms, our carbon monoxide alarms, and down below we have fire extinguishers. So fortunately there's a lot less to worry about. There's only a couple different styles out mm -hmm. there. So let's, let's go through those. So okay. your standard home fire extinguisher, is gonna be what they call an ABC rated fire extinguisher. So it's got symbols and it's got numbers. Okay. So this one says it's good for trash, wood, paper, flammable liquids, and electrically charged equipment. So pretty much anything in your home, this fire extinguisher is gonna be able okay. to extinguish that fire. And look at that, right on the side of the box, we have PASS. We know what that stands That's right. for already. We did that, yes. So this is a standard fire extinguisher. Mm -hmm. The one to its right is just larger. So this fire extinguisher says three times the firefighting capacity. So obviously <laughs> okay. it being bigger, it's going to be able to extinguish more fire. But this is really designed more for commercial occupancies than it is for residential, residential. homes. So, but these two are the exact same. Okay. And then this one's a little bit smaller. This one, you'll see it says it's designed specifically for auto. So this is one that they want you to keep in your car and it's for B and oh, C. Okay. So it's not gonna be for that trash can fire, but it's gonna work really well for flammable liquids or electrically charged equipment, like what you might find in a car. Right. And then the last one is a kitchen fire extinguisher. And so this one is also a BC rated fire extinguisher. Oh. So it's gonna be good for if you had like a grease fire on your stove okay. or all of those plugged in appliances. So this one is, it's not, you're not gonna get hurt if you were to use this on a trash can, but it's not gonna be as effective as the ABC type fire extinguisher. So, right. but it will be more effective on a cooking fire than an ABC fire extinguisher. Oh, so, it will. Yeah, so oh, obviously okay. this one would be best placed in the kitchen. Right. And if you're only gonna have one fire extinguisher in your home, you're probably best to get a standard fire extinguisher and keep it in your kitchen because cooking is the number one cause of all residential fires. But if you're willing to buy a couple, you could put this one in your kitchen and then you could get the standard fire extinguisher, the first one we talked about. You could put that in other places like near your furnace or your boiler or out in your garage, anywhere you might anticipate there could be a fire. How many do you recommend that someone have in their home? Yeah, so like I said, the minimum is one because really they're for stopping small fires before they become big fires. They're not for fighting your way down a flight of stairs if it's on fire. Right. So um, it's a minimum of one, but if you want to get that extra precaution and put one in your garage and down near your equipment. It's a good idea best. if you want to. Yeah, absolutely. Great, so great. And it, how long do we 
should we replace them? Yes, so um, they're good for about five to 10 years, but that's again, only if we do that little preventative maintenance we talked about earlier, right. flipping them upside down and tapping right. good them. good Because they all have that dry chemical powder in them and they will get solid and it won't be able to come out, so. Excellent, thanks. Yes, absolutely. So if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to check out our buyer's guide for residential smoke alarms and carbon monoxide alarms. And for more information, visit the Bedford Fire Department's website at bedfordnh.org or give us a call at 603-472-3219.